about five years ago, right around the time we met in Washington, D.C. for 828, I had begun to have a string of health issues that, quite honestly, has made me look crazy. And, quite honestly, I have felt crazy because of them. My vocal cord paralysis, my strange eyesight problems, and at first what we believed was just a simply very painful form of neuropathy. While I was at Fox, the pain would get so bad that my camera crew, God bless them, my executive producer Tiffany and our director Sarah worked out hand signals so they would know when to take the camera off of me. We didn't know at the time what was causing me to feel as though out of nowhere my hands or feet or arms and legs would feel like someone had just crushed them or set them on fire or pushed broken glass into my feet. I can't tell you how many nights, how many nights my wife would sit in the light looking at the bottom of my feet to make sure that there really wasn't any glass in them. At the same time, something else was happening that at first I actually thought was an advantage. I actually worked this one. I thought this was great. And it is the answer to the most frequently asked question of me. How do you do it all? Do you ever sleep? I would always say, oh yeah, not a lot. The real answer was, no. I could usually sleep maybe two to four hours a night. The great thing about it was I was never tired. We at a time talked about hiring a nighttime assistant. My daytime assistant would go home and my nighttime assistant would start at 6 p.m. and work sometimes until 2. That's how much we were working and I was wearing everyone out. The doctors tell me that up until recently I hadn't had any even real REM sleep in maybe as long as a decade. I didn't have a dream that I remember except for one in that decade. And quite honestly, this isn't a symptom that you look to fix. If you have a ton to do, you're like, I don't need sleep, this is great. But the first sign of trouble that I noticed was what I call a time collapse. If we had met before, I couldn't tell you if it was a month ago, a year ago, when we were in high school, I didn't remember. I knew I knew you and I could remember, but I, I didn't know it was last week. And I then began to lose names and faces and over time, entire conversations would go away. This is early on, this is maybe four years ago, and the doctors told me that it was normal for somebody who was processing as much as I was at the time. They say that it happens to presidents, and even Winston Churchill wrote about it. While the essential facts remain, life becomes fuzzy, and the, your computing power just spits that stuff out. It doesn't have any extra space on the hard drive. Well, this was happening at the same time that pain was becoming a very big issue for me. They were, they were telling me at the time there was no connection between the two. Then came the macular dystrophy and the vocal cord paralysis. All disconnected, or so they thought. I didn't think they were disconnected. That didn't make sense. I was a healthy guy. We went to doctor after doctor. We, we even looked into, is somebody poisoning me? What is happening? Every doctor I went to, each had a new finding, and they left me with more questions and no answers. I tried different diets. I tried medications. We moved to a warmer climate. Yes, this is one of the reasons why we moved to Dallas. Some things made it better, but really nothing worked. I had heard about it from some of my Navy SEAL friends. I had seen them work miracles with people. Um, honestly, it is a place that you go to if you are absolutely desperate because they do crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. And um, I will never forget, Tanya and I were there and um, they said, uh, uh, there are people that think we're cowboys. And I said, yes. And they started to explain, well, you know, we're not really cowboys, right? We're not really cowboys. And I'm like, look, dude, I don't need an Ivy League administrator. If you're not a medical cowboy, then I'm in the wrong place. Don't waste my time. They, um, they engage in experimental therapy you know, the stuff the government and the insurance companies aren't sure that they believe in. And because of that, they don't take insurance and they cost quite a bit of money and, uh, and they don't make any promises. But when you're 15 or 20 doctors in and no diagnosis, at least a diagnosis that you feel good about, what do you have to lose? Besides, I wondered, 
big miracle. What are the odds of me moving from New York City to Dallas, Texas, and buying a studio that was literally three and a half minutes down the street from the only place in the world that seems to specialize in exactly what was wrong with me? So we went, and after a few short visits, they found that I had several things going on from an autoimmune disorder to adrenal fatigue, and they found the connection on everything that was going on, and for the first time gave us hope that we could reboot my system, not stop it, but reverse at least parts of it. Everything these guys told us made sense for the first time. Never felt like it made sense. Um, you know, the, me never having to sleep was now finally understandable. Apparently the last sign of adrenal failure is a hyperextension of your adrenal gland. So in other words, I didn't need to sleep. I could have been lifting cars during my time at Fox. I wish I would have, that would have made a great episode. But now, because of that, my adrenal system had blown out, and all I could do was sleep. And one thing on top of another, and in the end, my immune system was looking at these natural hormones. It was looking at ad adrenaline as an infection, and so my body was trying to kill its basic functions. I also um, uh, looked and appeared at the time to be in the early stages of Addison's disease. That's what JFK had, and it's a complete shutdown of your adrenal glands. Thank goodness. Mine are holding on by a thread, but I no longer make uh, cortisol or adrenaline. Yay! Those are pretty important to heal and live and function. And my doctors told me that it was my faith in God that was powering me through all of this, that I shouldn't be standing, that if I would have stayed in New York City, they didn't think I would be alive today. After months of treatment and completely changing the way I eat, sleep, work, and live, uh, um, along with ongoing hormone treatment and intensive physical therapy, I have reversed the process.